Uh, please let's hear it for the very funny other half of Dow Comedy Studio. Give it up for Chris Oliver. <laughs> So hey, how, how you guys doing? I'm, I'm Chris Oliver. Um, I, I teach English as a second language. That's my, my day job. And uh, I have a lot of Chinese students. And some of them have had English classes before back in China. But I, I don't know if you know this, if you take English classes in China, you don't learn American English. Right? You learn British English. <laughs> And I can always tell because, you know, it's mostly the same language, but there are a few words that are a little bit different. Uh, so, for example, instead of a teacher, they call me a cunt. <laughs> <laughs> Subtle nuances that the, the trained ear can pick up on. <laughs> uh, what else? I, 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 I don't really follow sports. Uh, which is a little awkward sometimes if you're a guy. People just expect you to know what's going on in the wide world of sports, right? People just come up to you to start a conversation. I just one guy come up to me at work and he said, uh, what would you think about that game last night? And I said, what game? And he said, exactly, where were they? <laughs> Like, damn, I am killing it in this conversation. <laughs> I have no fucking idea what I'm talking about. Um, I'm just not, I'm not a very alpha male personality. Um, I don't want to shatter any illusions. <laughs> but I'm not, uh, I got this one guy, this one guy came up to me and he looked at me right in the eye and he said, Oh, hey, what's new, Steve? <laughs> And my, you know, my name's not Steve. <laughs> but I don't want to be a dick about it. <laughs> so I'm Steve now. That's <laughs> fine. That's fine. That's fine. That's fine. <laughs> uh, let's see. We got, we got any paramedics in the audience? <laughs> no? I just, I just want to find out, I want to, like, how often does this happen, where you're trying to revive someone, and you say, okay, uh, how many fingers am I holding up? And they say, three. And you say, okay, who's the president? And they say, oh, God, just let me die. Is that happening? <laughs> I feel like that's happening a lot these days. It's, it's bad. Because we're not coming back from this, right? Like, we're not going to have Donald Trump for president for four years. And then just go back to being a regular country, right? That's <laughs> over. The, uh, the weirdest thing, I mean, he's still going on about the wall. You know, the wall. He was saying last week on TV, he was saying, hey, you know, the American people are with me on this wall. The American people don't want drugs flowing into our country. Like, what the fuck are you basing that on? <laughs> Like, if Americans didn't want drugs coming in, no one would bother bringing them in. That's like economics 101. You think they're just talking to the drugs like, okay, you guys want to go see the Grand Canyon? No, there's someone's buying the shit. The weirdest thing to me is, is the people who are, who used to during the election were saying, oh, well, Trump's refreshing, you know? <laughs> because he says what's on his mind. He just says whatever's on his mind. That's so refreshing. Like, yeah, yeah, a, a white guy who's not afraid to share his opinion. That's a new one. <laughs> Let's get this guy a job. That's, uh, we can't, we, we can't be, Thinking about the president all the time. Yeah. Yeah. This we can't be taking up all this space in our brain just to think about the fucking president. 
<clears throat> we need this space in our brain to prepare for the death of Jeff Goldblum. <laughs> He's not going to live forever. <laughs> is going to die, and it's just going to fucking wipe us out, because we've been spending all our time thinking about the fucking president. <laughs> it's bad, is what I'm saying. Things are bad right now. The whole fucking country is falling apart. And I guess I just didn't realize how much it was this prince holding everything together. <laughs> Right, because everybody, men, women, black, white, gay, straight, we all agreed on Prince. No matter how much you hated someone, you could look at him and say, you know what? We got Prince. Guy's been dead, what, two years now? We're having a full-on civil war. I just, Prince was the Saddam Hussein of America. <laughs> well, well, you know, because nobody understood that he was the only thing keeping the warring factions from killing each other. He's <laughs> Prince. Um, and there were warning signs. You can't say there weren't warning signs. Uh, Bohemian Rhapsody, ladies and gentlemen. Bohemian Rhapsody is Queen's biggest hit. In every country in the world, except the United States. Here, Queen's biggest hit is, We Will Rock You. <laughs> So, of course, we elected Donald Trump. <laughs> We're the fucking We Will Rock You country. <laughs> How'd you think this was gonna end? <laughs> I don't know. The one good thing out of all of it, the one good thing is at least now we know. Right? When you're talking to your conservative relatives now, you know. Right? You don't, like it used to be like uh, my, my relatives would say something that sounded kind of racist and I'd be like, well, they, they didn't mean it like that. <laughs> <laughs> but now I know they fucking meant it like that! <laughs> That's what they fucking meant. <clears throat> God, the latest thing now is uh, the Republicans are saying, oh, the, the Democrats need to disavow uh, the hateful rhetoric of Louis Farrakhan. <laughs> Who the fuck is talking about Louis Farrakhan in 2019? I, I haven't even heard that name since the 90s. He's the smash mouth of black activists. <laughs> Smash Mouth. <laughs> Black activists. <sighs> I like I like eating at fan fancy restaurants. <laughs> like that. I, I like the kind of restaurants where like if you ask for sugar, they'll pull out a fresh glazed donut and grate it over you. <laughs> <laughs> this makes me feel cool. <laughs> I, uh, I, did, I had to go to the doctor yesterday. Uh, not comedy yesterday, actual yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> so I was, I'm in the waiting room and I started, you know, looking through these pamphlets. There was one, uh, warning signs of depression, right? And it had all these questions like, do you ever feel like a failure? Do you ever feel useless? And I was reading it going, oh, maybe that's, maybe that's my problem. Maybe I have depression. And then I realized, oh no, I am a useless failure. <laughs> <laughs> so it's fine. 
<laughs> and not depressed. <laughs> just perceptive. <laughs> Uh, I'm not depressed, but I'm also, I'm not a, a you know, really happy person. <laughs> thing. I'm, my attitude towards life is basically, uh, I could take it or leave it. <laughs> I mean, I'm not suicidal or anything, but, uh, but if I got hit by a car, and I was laying in the street bleeding out. <laughs> and I, I can't really see myself, you know, clinging to life. <laughs> this is not me. Uh, the doctor told me my cholesterol was too high. Which, I mean, you know, it's always been high. I've never really worried about it uh, before. Uh, in fact, in the past, when my doctor told me I had high cholesterol, I'd say, look, doc, if my choice is to live 100 years eating kale and wheatgrass, <laughs> or live 50 years eating barbecue and fried chicken, I'm going to take the 50 years every time. <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> But when you're 49... <laughs> Listen, 50 years doesn't sound that good. <laughs> Turns out I am not that dedicated to this principle. <laughs> Um, uh, I, uh, you tried to get me on Lipitor for the cholesterol. I was, no, I'm not, now that they have the commercials on TV, where they, where they list all the side effects, I am not fucking with any of these prescription drugs. Um, <clears throat> and they always have, they always have this very calm, soothing voice, uh, reading the side effects. But if you listen to what they're actually saying, it sounds like the plot to a horror movie. <laughs> I'll say, uh, Ambien may cause drowsiness. Hallucinations. <laughs> Sleepwalking. Lost time. <laughs> Missing pets. <laughs> Waking up with blood on your hands. <laughs> Rings of unsolved murder. <laughs> and in the end, the horrible realization that it was you! You all along! <laughs> Ambient. <laughs> Let's see, how are we doing here? I've got, uh, I got ants in my house again. That's, uh... Thing. Um, they were listen to this. Last night they were coming in the window, and there was like a big line of them all across the living room, into the hallway, around the corner, into the kitchen, up into the trash can. <laughs> and, and I, so I got some bug spray, and man, I just fucking genocide all through my living room, just ethnic cleansing these fucking ants. Uh, <laughs> And then, and then I went to bed, uh, but I couldn't sleep because I kept thinking about that one survivor ant <laughs> coming back to the nest like, all dead, all dead, all dead. And I fucking committed to that act out, people. <laughs> Be something. <laughs> uh, the, the ants aren't that bad. I, I had bed bugs once. We had bed bugs, and that was really the bed bugs are the worst. The worst thing about bed bugs is after you get rid of them, 
for at least a year, you still think you have them. <laughs> right? To this day, if I think I see a bug, I start itching. <laughs> In fact, if I see an abandoned mattress on the side of the road, I will swerve into the other lane <laughs> to get away from that. Uh, but yeah, we figured out we had bed bugs, so we called the exterminator, and he said, okay, I'll come out there tomorrow. I'll take care of it. Uh, but then we didn't want to go back to bed in the fucking bed bug bed, right? So we went to the living room, got the pull-out couch out, and we slept in there. And the next day, uh, the exterminator comes and he sees the pull-out couch and he just gets this look on his face like, uh, you, uh, you, you really shouldn't move the food source. <laughs> because they're going to get hungry in the middle of the night and they're going to come in here looking for food. They'll spread through the house. I'm like, wait, listen back up a minute. Did you just call me the food source? <laughs> Why are we having this debate on the bed bugs' terms? <laughs> it seems like a lot of ground to concede up front, you know. <laughs> food source. I, uh, I've been listening to a lot of music lately. Uh, listening to a lot of my old favorites, you know, before the before the Me Too movement starts hitting the music industry. Because <laughs> right, that's just going to, uh, they're all going to be wiped out, you know. Um, but it's, it gives me an interesting perspective, because like, uh, I've been listening to Led Zeppelin since I was in middle school. They've been on the radio pretty much every day for as long as I've been alive. And it got to the point where when I'd listen to Led Zeppelin, I wouldn't even really hear them. They're like background noise. Um, but now, now every time I listen to Led Zeppelin, I think, wow, this, this might be the last time I ever listen to Led Zeppelin. Because <laughs> it gives it a sense of urgency, you know? Hmm. No? You think that, that, that fish story is going to be as funny when the woman tells it? <laughs> Google it. <laughs> I don't know. Sometimes you tell a joke, but it doesn't land. And a lot of times when a comic tells a joke that it doesn't land, they'll say, Oh, I'm sorry, was that too real for you people? And they'll say, Oh, too soon? Uh, I've never heard a comic say, Oh, I'm sorry, was that not funny enough? <laughs> Because <laughs> nine times out of ten, you know, that's actually <laughs> the area that needs to be addressed. <laughs> no, no. How do you how do you guys feel about vegans? Okay. Anybody think vegans are annoying? <laughs> Yeah. I mean, I, I'll admit, I think vegans are annoying, and it, it's, it's, a funny, it's a funny opinion to have, because vegans are clearly right. <laughs> like, there's no justification for mass murdering pigs, uh, but, uh, but we treat it like, oh, they, they act so superior, they so... They, uh, I, I think this is probably the way people used to talk about abolitionists. <laughs> yeah, I think they used to be, oh yeah, don't... Huh. <laughs> don't invite that damnable Quentin Compson to your body. <laughs> Unless you want to spend half the night cornered by your chiffero. <laughs> he goes on and on about how slaves are people. <laughs> Damnable Quentin Compson. Uh, it's 
Some good news, uh, I saw uh, SeaWorld is phasing out their orca uh, attractions. That was, that was pretty good. Yeah, the, the dolphins were like, so we can go too? And no, get the fuck back in your torture tanks! <laughs> Until somebody makes a documentary about you. <laughs> Saw that movie, uh, The Shape of Water. Did you guys see that one? Yeah. Pretty good movie. Um, but I noticed there's something about I know is there's a lot of movies like that where like a girl falls in love with a monster, right? There's Beauty and the Beast, King Kong. It's like this whole trope, right? Um, I can't think of a single movie where a dude falls in love with a monster. <laughs> not talking about like sexy vampires. I mean, like female Bigfoot. <laughs> there's no, there's no romantic comedy where the trailers say, uh. Jason is wound a little tight. <laughs> and Zoe is the fucking creature from the Black Lagoon or something <laughs> shit. <laughs> Together they <laughs> Whatever you think the punchline for that. <laughs> there's, I got, uh, there's a lot of... I, I don't like James Bond movies either. Mm -hmm. He's... I don't like James Bond movies because they always make this huge deal out of, oh yeah, he's a double-O agent. They're the most elite agents in the world, right? He has a license to kill. I mean, that just makes him the same as every cop in America. <laughs> <laughs> he's got a license to kill? Yeah, so is my cousin Bob, the state trooper. <laughs> He just has to say the guy was reaching for his waistband. It's, it's not that big a, it's a I also I don't like uh, Catholic horror movies. <laughs> you know, I'm talking about like The Exorcist, The Omen. I, I grew up Catholic. I do not relate to these movies at all. Because Catholics aren't afraid of the devil. <laughs> And Catholics aren't sitting around worrying about the fucking Antichrist or, or getting possessed by a demon. Right? And Catholics are afraid of God. Yeah. <laughs> that should be the monster in your Catholic world. I think a, like a Catholic slasher movie would just be God killing people off one by one. <laughs> Which I guess is just life. <laughs> uh, a couple weeks ago, I watched uh, I watched that movie, The Big Chill. You know that one? Yeah. Like that? yeah. I hadn't seen it since it came out. It came out when I was in high school. Um, I don't know. I think I just timed it badly. Because when I was in high school and it came out, I watched it and I was like, I don't want to see this fucking movie about a bunch of old baby boomers and their fucking problems. <laughs> now I'm 50 and I watch it and I don't want to watch a movie about these fucking young people who are still going through their midlife crisis. <laughs> <laughs> that. Um, but I, I have been watching a lot of 80s movies lately, a lot, a lot of 80s comedies. That's been kind of my, my escape from all this hellish uh, stuff going on in the world. Um, but you know what I've discovered? 80s comedies are fucked up. <laughs> right? Like, every 80s comedy has some kind of rape joke or, or some kind of weird racist thing going on. Is it? Like, have you guys seen Revenge of the Nerds? Yeah? Yeah. But have you seen it lately? Because <laughs> there is some fucked up shit happening in Revenge of the Nerds. But there is a scene in Revenge of the Nerds where the main nerd puts on a Darth Vader mask and pretends to be the jock so that he can have sex with the jock's girlfriend. 
And you can tell, you can tell by the way this scene plays out that nobody working on that movie at any point said, you know, this is kind of fucked up. <laughs> Here it is like, oh, these wacky nerds. <laughs> what other zany hijinks can they get into? Uh, there's another one, there's, there's a movie from uh, 1986 called Soul Man. Uh, you know this one? Back me up. This is real. Uh, so, 1986, uh, it's C. Thomas Howell, and he wants to, I don't know, he wants to go to college on a diversity scholarship or something. So he puts on blackface, goes to college, that's the movie. And everyone was just okay with this movie existing. <laughs> It wasn't a big hit, but nobody was burning down the theater. <laughs> oh yeah, Soul Man, that looks funny. That's uh, uh, You know what else happened in 1986? Um, Ronald Reagan appointed Jeff Sessions to the federal bench. But his appointment was blocked by Congress because he was too racist. Yep. Right? Look it up. That's how racist Jeff Sessions is. <laughs> that the people that were okay with Soul Man were like, this guy, nah, we gotta fucking. Uh, fuck this motherfucker. He's too racist. Too racist. There is one, one movie I do uh, really like from the 80s, uh, is Mr. Mom. <laughs> you guys like Mr. Mom? Yeah. yeah. A huge comedy hit when it came out. Um, if you've never seen Mr. Mom, let me just explain <laughs> the wacky comedy premise <laughs> that this movie is built on. Um, okay, so Michael Keaton's a guy, right? And his wife gets a job, and so he has to take care of his own fucking kids. <laughs> That's it. That's the whole comedy hit of the year. People are coming up to their friends like, oh my god, dude, have you seen Mr. Mom? Dude, you gotta see Mr. Mom. It's so crazy. He does the dishes! I was laughing so hard, dude. You gotta see this one. Alright, thank you very much.